This is the first installment of Ovid, Covid. Ovid's Metamorphosis, the Arthur Golding translation of 1567. The first book of Ovid's Metamorphosis. Of shapes transformed to bodies strange, I purpose to entreat. Ye gods vouchsafe, for you are they erot this wondrous feat, to further this mine enterprise. And from the world begun, grant that my verse may to my time his course directly run. Before the sea and land were made, and heaven that all doth hide, in all the world one only face of nature did abide, which chaos height, a huge rude heap, and nothing else but even a heavy lump and clotter clod of seeds together driven, of things at strife among themselves, for want of order due. No sun as yet with lightsome beams the shapeless world did view. No moon in growing did repair her horns with borrowed light. Nor yet the earth amidst the air did hang by wondrous slight, just pazed by her proper weight. Nor winding in and out did Amphitrite with her arms embrace the earth about. For where was earth was sea and air, so was the earth unstable, the air all dark, the sea likewise to bear a ship unable. No kind of thing had proper shape, but each confounded other. For in one self-same body strove the hot and cold together, the moist with dry, the soft with hard, the light with things of weight, this strife God and nature break, and set in order straight. The earth from heaven, the sea from earth, he parted orderly. And from the thick and foggy air, he took the lightsome sky. Which, when he once unfolded had, and severed from the blind and clotted heap, he setting each from other did them bind in endless friendship to agree. The fire most pure and bright, the substance of the heaven itself, because it was so light, did mount aloft, and set itself in highest place of all. The second room of right to air, for lightness did befall. The earth more gross drew down with it each weighty kind of matter, and set itself in lowest place. Again the waving water did lastly challenge for his place, the utmost coast and bound, of all the compass of the earth, to close the steadfast ground. Now when he in this foresaid wise what God so e'er he was, had broke and into members put this rude, confused mass. Then first, because in every part the earth should equal be, he made it like a mighty ball, in compass as we see. And here and there he cast in seas, to whom he gave a law, to swell with every blast of wind and every stormy flaw and with their waves continually to beat upon the shore of all the earth within their bounds enclosed by them afore. Moreover, springs and mighty mirrors and lakes he did augment, and flowing streams of crooked brooks and winding banks he pent, of which the earth doth drink up some, and some with restless race do seek the sea, where finding scope of larger room and space, instead of banks, they beat on shores. He did command the plain and champion grounds to stretch out wide, 
and valleys to remain eye underneath, and eke the woods to hide them decently with tender leaves, and stony hills to lift themselves on high. And as two zones do cut the heaven upon the righter side, and other twain upon the left likewise the same divide, the middle in outrageous heat exceeding all the rest. Even so likewise through great foresight to God it seemed best, the earth included in the same should so divided be, as with the number of the heaven her zones might full agree. Of which the middle zone in heat the utmost twain in cold exceed so far, that there to dwell no creature dare be bold. Between these two so great extremes, two other zones are fixed, where temperature of heat and cold indifferently is mixed. Now over this doth hang the air, which, as it is more flaty than earth or water, so again than fire it is more weighty, there hath he placed mist and clouds, and for to fear men's minds, the thunder and the lightning eek, with cold and blustering winds. But yet the maker of the world permitteth not alway the winds to use the air at will. For at this present day, though each from other placed be in sundry coasts aside, the violence of their boisterous blasts things scarcely can abide. They so turmoil as though they would the world in pieces rend, so cruel is those brothers' wrath when that they do contend. And therefore to the morning gray, the realm of Nabathy, to Persis and to other lands and countries that do lie far underneath the morning star, did Eurus take his flight. Likewise the setting of the sun and shutting in of night belong to Zephyr, and the blasts of blustering Boreas reign in Scythia and in other lands set under Charles his wain. And unto Oster doth belong the coast of all the south, who beareth showers and rotten mists continual in his mouth. Above all these he set aloft the clear and lightsome sky, without all dregs of earthly filth or grossness utterly. The bounds of things were scarcely yet by him thus pointed out, but that appeared in the heaven, stars glistering all about, which in the said confused heap had hidden been before and to the intent with lively things each region for to store, the heavenly soil to gods and stars and planets first he gave. The waters next, both fresh and salt, he let the fishes have, the subtle air to flickering fowls and birds he hath assigned, the earth to beasts both wild and tame of sundry sort and kind, how be it yet of all this while the creature wanting was, far more divine, of nobler mind, which should the residue pass in depth of knowledge, reason, wit, and high capacity, and which of all the residue should the Lord and ruler be? Then either he that made the world and things in order set, of heavenly seed engendered man, or else the earth as yet young, lusty, fresh, and in her flowers, and parted from the sky, but late before, the seed thereof as yet held inwardly, the which Prometheus tempering straight with water of the spring, did make in likeness to the gods that govern everything, and where all other beasts behold the ground with groveling eye, he gave to man a stately look replete with majesty, and willed him to behold the heaven with countenance cast on high, 
to mark and understand what things were in the starry sky. And thus the earth, which late before had neither shape nor hue, did take the noble shape of man, and was transformed new. Then sprang up first the golden age, which of itself maintained the truth and right of everything unforced and unconstrained. There was no fear of punishment. There was no threatening law in brazen tables nailed up to keep the folk in awe. There was no man would crouch or creep to judge with cap in hand, they lived safe without a judge, in every realm and land. The lofty pine tree was not hewn from mountains where it stood, in seeking strange and foreign lands to rove upon the flood. Men knew none other countries yet than where themselves did keep. There was no town enclosed yet with walls and ditches deep, no horn nor trumpet was in use, no sword nor helmet worn. The world was such that soldiers' help might easily be forborne. The fertile earth as yet was free, untouched of spade or plough. And yet it yielded of itself of every things enough, and men themselves contented well with plain and simple food that on the earth of nature's gift without their travail stood, did live by raspis, heps, and haws, by cornels, plums, and cherries, by sloes and apples, nuts and pears, and loathsome brambleberries. The springtime lasted all the year, and Zephyr with his mild and gentle blast did cherish things that grew of own accord. The ground untilled, all kind of fruits did plenteously afford. No muck nor tillage was bestowed on lean and barren land to make the corn of better head and ranker for to stand. Then streams ran milk, then streams ran wine, and yellow honey flowed from each green tree whereon the rays of fiery Phoebus glowed. But when that into limbo once Saturnus being thrust, the rule and charge of all the world was under Jove unjust, and that the Silver Age came in, more somewhat base than gold, more precious yet than freckled brass, Immediately the old and ancient spring did Jove a bridge, and made thereof anon four seasons, winter, summer, spring, and autumn, off and on. Then first of all began the air with fervent heat to swelt, then icicles hung roping down, then for the cold was felt men gan to shroud themselves in house, their houses were the thicks and bushy queeches, hollow caves, or hardles made of sticks. Then first of all were furrows drawn, and corn was cast in ground, the simple ox with sorry sighs, to heavy yoke was bound. Next after this succeeded straight the third and brazen age, more hard of nature, somewhat bent to cruel wars and rage, but yet not wholly past all grace. Of iron is the last in no part good and tractable as former ages past. For when that of this wicked age once opened was the vein, therein all mischief rushed forth. Then faith and truth were fain and honest shame to hide their heads, for whom crept stoutly in craft, treason, violence, envy, pride, and wicked lust to win. The shipman hoist his sails to wind, whose names he did not know, 
and ships that erst in tops of hills and mountains had it grow, did leap and dance on uncouth waves. And men began to bound with dowels and ditches drawn in length the free and fertile ground, which was as common as the air and light of sun before. Not only corn and other fruits, for sustenance and for store, were now exacted of the earth, but eft they gan to dig, and in the bowels of the ground unsatiably to rig, for riches couched and hidden deep, in places near to hell, the spurs and stirs unto vice, and foes to doing well. Then hurtful iron came abroad, then came forth yellow gold, more hurtful than the iron far. Then came forth battle bold, that fights with both, and shakes his sword in cruel bloody hand. Men live by ravine and by stealth. The wandering guest doth stand in danger of his host, the host in danger of his guest, the fathers of their son-in-laws, Yea, seldom time doth rest Between born brothers such accord and love as ought to be. The good man seeks the good wife's death, And his again seeks she. The stepdames fell their husband's sons With poison do assail. To see their fathers live so long The children do bewail. All godliness lies under foot, and Lady Astry, last of heavenly virtues, from this earth in slaughter drowned past. And to the intent the earth alone thus should not be oppressed, and heaven above in slothful ease and careless quiet rest. Men say that giants went about the realm of heaven to win, to place themselves to reign as gods and lawless lords therein. And hill on hill they heaped up aloft into the sky, till God Almighty from the heaven did let his thunder fly, the dint whereof the airy tops of high Olympus break, and pressed Pelion violently from under Ossa's strake. When whelmed in their wicked work those cursed caitiffs lay, the earth their mother took their blood yet warm, and, as they say, did give it life. And for because some imps should still remain of that same stock, she gave it shape and limbs of men again. This offspring eke against the gods did bear a native spite, in slaughter and in doing wrong was all their whole delight. Their deeds declared them of blood engendered for to be. The which, as soon as Saturn's son from heaven aloft did see, he fetched a sigh, and therewithal revolving in his thought the shameful act which at a feast Lycian late had wrought, and yet unknown or blown abroad. He gan thereat to storm and stomach like an angry Jove, and therefore to reform such heinous acts, he summoned straight his court of parliament, whereto resorted all the gods that had their summons sent. High in the welkin is a way apparent to the sight in starry nights, which of his passing whiteness milky height. It is the street that to the court and princely palace leads, of mighty Jove whose thunderclaps each living creature dreads. On both the sides of this same way do stand in stately port the sumptuous houses of the peers. For all the common sort dwell scattering here and there abroad, the face of all the sky the houses of the chief estates and princes do supply. And sure, and if I may be bold to speak my fancy free, I take this place of all the heaven the palace for to be. Now when the gods assembled were, and each had ta'en his place, Jove standing up aloft and leaning on his ivory mace, right dreadfully his bushy locks did thrice or four times shake, 
wherewith he made both sea and land and heaven itself to quake, and afterward in wrathful words his angry mind thus brake. I never was in greater care nor more perplexity how to maintain my sovereign state and princely royalty, when with their hundredth hands apiece the adder-footed rout did practice for to conquer heaven and for to cast us out. For though it were a cruel foe, yet did that war depend upon one ground, and in one stock it had his final end. But now, as far as any sea about the world doth wind, I must destroy both man and beast and all the mortal kind. I swear by Styxes' hideous streams that run within the ground, all other means must first be sought. But when there can be found no help to heal a festered sore, it must be cut away, lest that the parts that yet are sound in danger should be put. We have a number in the world that man's estate surmount, of such whom for their private gods the country folks account, as satyrs, fawns, and sundry nymphs, with sylvan's eke beside, that in the woods and hilly grounds continually abide. Whom into heaven since that as yet we vouch not safe to take, and of the honour of this place co-partners for to make, such lands as to inhabit in we erst to them assigned, that they should still enjoy the same. It is my will and mind. But can you think that they in rest and safety shall remain when proud Lycian lay in wait by secret means and train to have confounded me your lord, who in my hand do bear the dreadful thunder, and of whom even you do stand in fear? The house was moved at his words, and earnestly required, the man that had so traitorously against their lord conspired. Even so when rebels did arise to destroy the Roman name, by shedding of our Caesar's blood, the horror of the same did pierce the hearts of all mankind, and made the world to quake. Whose fervent zeal in thy behalf, O August, thou did take, as thankfully as Jove doth hear the loving care of his, who beckoning to them with his hand, forbiddeth them to hiss, and therewithal through all the house attentive silence is, 